Hey everyone, welcome to Thursday, September 21st. We are back with the weekday Realify, and today we're talking about how to utilize direct mail effectively. I'm Nick Baldwin. Thanks for being here. Um, Leslie, go ahead and say hello. To hi, everybody. hi everyone. Leslie Jackson here. Excited to be here every day with you guys. Yeah, we're excited to keep this going. Um, we're going to talk about direct mail. Yesterday, we had Jason Abrams on. One of the things that um, he learned from talking to so many top agents over the course of his career was if you're not utilize if you're not utilizing direct mail, you're literally crazy. That's what he said. Like you're literally insane if you're not because he's never seen um, he's never seen a an ROI bigger than that. You know what I mean? So why shouldn't we be using it? But we have to do it the right way. So farming a neighborhood is a pivotal strategy for real estate agents, especially if you're aspiring to build a robust presence in a very specific community and cultivate a steady stream of business. But by focusing your marketing and relationship building efforts on a designated area, you can become the go-to experts and in turn fostering trust and recognition among the local residents. Um, what you have to understand about farming is uh, farming a neighborhood in real estate refers to the practice of concentrating marketing and sales efforts in a very specific area. So that's, you're doing it with the intention of establishing yourself, like I said, as the go-to expert in that specific location. Go ahead, Leslie. Awesome. So let's <laughs> talk about, I was like, is that you're up. my cue? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Here I am. Wake up. Um, so let's talk about the definition and relevance of farming. Even in the digital age, direct mail uh, mailers we still remain effective. And I think it's something that you all need to continue to pay attention to consistently because it's a great way to potentially just reach out to clients, get to know, you know, that neighborhood. And the concept really goes back to nurturing relationships in your specific area. And just like Jason said last uh, yesterday, you're going to have to love that farm. You pa be passionate about that farm. You eat, sleep in that farm, do everything there, like play with your family, like whatever it is. So that is really getting back to just immersive farming. Um, and it's yeah. simple, right? It's just simple. It's like, which area are you passionate about? Which area do you know about like the back of your hand and be in it, completely be in it, authentically be in it. Yeah, so. eat, sleep, work, live, shop, play, yes. and farm. And it's super important uh, to do that. I mean, listen, you can farm more than one neighborhood, right? Like, but I've always been a big fan of farming your the neighborhood you live in. Uh, you know, and if you're if you're an analytical, you know, and you look at your neighborhood and you're like, well, you know, the turnover rate isn't so great here. I always think like, yes, if you're choosing a farm outside of your your direct neighborhood, you might want to look a little bit more into numbers. But I think if you're choosing to also farm your neighborhood, that even though the turnover rate might be low, it's still to be recognized, it's still good to be recognized where you live, where you immediately live. Right. Yeah. Um, and just remember to be authentic, as authentic as you possibly can in um in your messaging. So let's talk about, uh, we're going to circle back a little bit. Um, and if you've been on the other calls, this is going to kind of come full circle for you. If this is your first call, don't worry. I'm going to drop some links in the chat where you can kind of help this come full circle for yourself. But, um, you know, building your brand, Identi when you're doing your mailing, especially when you're introducing yourself to a neighborhood, you want to really uh, hone in on identifying your unique selling proposition, right? Like why would someone want to work with you? Do you donate to a specific charity from every closing? Um, do you stage every property? Uh, do you do a video for each property? Um, do you do multiple open houses? Like whatever your, whatever you do that's different than uh, other agents in the area, uh, make sure that that is something that the the residents in that area are aware of. Um, also, um, you want to uh, 
make sure that your logo is um, is front and center, right? Like we've talked about how to create a great logo and we have the video right here, 10 steps to a great logo. I'm going to drop it in the chat. So if you haven't watched that replay, definitely go ahead and watch that replay because your logo is not your brand, but your logo, your logo comes after you've established what your brand is with your values, your beliefs, your unique selling proposition, right? Like we see a lot of agents who, you know, just go out there and they'll choose, they'll pick a picture of a roof of a house and put their name under it. It's very, very um, normal. Everyone sees that, but you really want to create something that is memorable, right? Like if you think of some of the great logos out there, they're also very simple, very clean. Um, there's not a lot going on. Um, so make sure that uh, your logo follows the 10 steps in that video that I just dropped in the chat. Um, because that's going to be what people remember. Also, when you're building your brand in a neighborhood, you want to make sure that you pick the right color scheme. Because choosing a color scheme that reflects your brand's personality and evokes desired emotions is super important. Because believe it or not, colors are psychological. And there are certain colors that can relate to real estate. Um, because selecting the right color palette is super critical of logo design because it plays a really significant role in conveying your brand's personality and evoking specific emotions. So let me show you guys um, something fun that I showed on a different um, on a different call. So here is um, a logo chart. And this is just some colors. It's not all. I'm sorry, a color chart. It's not all colors some colors um it's missing you know yellow and pink and whatever but each color has um a meaning like look at red so kw's logo is red mostly uh energy power strength passion love but then you also have danger risk but and then look at the logos that are um that are uh that are red that we know and love so this is cool to look at a color palette like this to then figure out which color you want to use. Psychologically, the person who's seeing it will, will feel certain things. They might not know, but over time, there's, done, there's been research on, on this and they figured out how, how people feel, what emotions come up. So picking the right color is, is very, very important. So don't, don't just pick black because you like black or blue because you like blue. You know what I'm saying? Be, be, be a purposeful about it. For sure. Um, yeah. Also, your typography, the font that you're using. Okay. Selecting appropriate fonts that align with your image. Um, that, you know, some like, like a serif font can convey tradition and professionalism. While sans serif fonts can communicate um, like something modern and approachable. So you might actually want to look up what different fonts mean and then put that together with what different colors evoke in somebody and make that and put that into your logo. Um, so that's what's that's what I would suggest doing, putting your logo together in a very like purposeful type of way. Love it. I just talked for a really long time. You just take a break over there, Nick. <laughs> so um now we're just really kind of putting it all together with brand recognition so this all this all goes back to when somebody sees your sign when somebody sees your logo when see when they continuously see a consistent pattern of your marketing they're gonna think about you and they're gonna maybe even refer you without even knowing you I mean it can happen right it's kind of like you continue to see the same person over and over again, you start, you become curious about what they're doing and hey, they look very successful, right? So being consistent with marketing builds recognition, it builds credibility, you know, and if you're inconsistent, that's very similar to not really getting to know you either. So just remember that the consistency over time will build rapport even without you knowing it. Um, so make sure that your brand is visible 
and it, it really evokes trust and credibility to your community members in your farm. And we can't emphasize this enough that real estate is a personal business. So make it personal. Agents aren't selling themselves as much as they are selling homes. So be genuine. Um, just like Nick said, like what really speaks to you and your logo so that people can really resonate with you, right? We're talking about human to human connection. So don't underestimate that in your marketing, in your, uh, in your farms. So. Yeah. And I just dropped in the chat, um, a couple videos that will help you in tying this all together. The 10 steps to a memorable brand and 10 steps to a great logo. Those are past, um, past masterminds that we did. So those will help you when you're kind of bringing this all together. Uh, making it eye, making it eye catching, making what you're sending out eye catching, using high quality photos, uh, pictures of happy clients, community landmarks, whatever your, um, whatever your goal is for that mailer. Not every mailer has to be selling something to someone. Um, like I've always thought like, okay, one month, maybe a just listed the next month, maybe, um, an event that's coming up the next month something about the market the month after that, maybe there's a holiday. So on and off with selling um, and with more personalized type of stuff. Um, but keep your message clear using the KISS principle. Keep it oh. simple and straightforward. Your main message should be clear and direct. Huh, I like People that. should not be trying to figure out what you're trying to tell them. Less is more on a postcard. Okay, you want it to be clean, simple, easy to understand, clear and direct. And you should have a call to action on every single mailer, right? There's no point in sending mm -hmm. a mailer <clears throat> if there's no way for you to track it. So every piece of mail should have a clear call to action for like a free home evaluation, check out recent sales in your area, and the way that you do that is with a QR code. And so if you use a QR code and you link, you know, a home evaluation landing page or re a recent sales landing page from your website, when they scan that code, they'll get that link sent to your phone, their phone, and you will in turn get a notification that somebody scanned it. And so there's a lot of um, QR code lead capture programs out there. So if you Google it, uh, QR code lead capture, um, many of them will, you have to pay for these because if you want to get the, if you want to get the notification that someone scanned it, it will then send you um, the phone number. And in some cases, the name associated with that phone number. So that's a great way of tracking whether or not people are actually engaging with your mailers. Yeah, Perfect. what do you think about that? I love that. I'm gonna to touch a little bit more on that too with best practices. Okay. So like we said, define your target audience, become purposeful with who they are. And then it's all about balance. So let's talk about frequency and how often sending too much can per be perceived as spam, right? I mean, we get a lot of mailers in the, mail all the time over and over again, you just continue to throw them out. So if it's too often, it can be perceived as spam, but if it's not enough, it could be too, it could be misled opportunities, right? You're going to be missing out on those um, connections. So like Nick said, is tracking and metrics. Like, so how can we track those, those mailers by the use of QR codes, unique URLs to just really measure your message? And again, keep it simple. I've seen so many people just overthink a postcard with too many offerings on both sides. So be just really specific on what you're offering. Be authentic with that offer so that you can provide something of value. For example, we want to show that we are the local economist of choice. So why not give that market update on a consistent basis so they look to you for the answers when they are ready to buy or sell. And you can't go wrong with testimonials. So frequency, tracking and metrics, having authentic offers and providing testimonials is also, can also be beneficial because again, you're trying to grow that credibility 
make sure that you're showing your skill set to that neighborhood, to those people that just sold their home with you over asking on, you know, in that particular area so that people know that you are the best of the best. And you're not just boasting, you actually have people backing you up with that testimonial. Yeah, we mentioned that um, on a previous call with sending the testimonials out, um, especially, yeah. you know, it works better if you've sold a property in that neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. But I've done this where I'll put a testimonial on a postcard or I'll put several testimonials on a postcard in a neighborhood that I sold a house in. And I'll say, I just sold your neighbor's home. And this is what they, this is what they said about working with us. And you have the review there. So you're, they, they know that you're not just making this up about yourself. Like people actually love you because uh, personal recommendations and stories are the most powerful that there are. Um, that's why, you know, all of these sites, you know, Zillow, even Amazon have reviews because people like to know what their peers are saying. Mm -hmm. And they especially like to know what their friends and family and people close to them are saying. So if you have positive testimonials, integrate it into your design and send that out to the farm and it could be game changing for you. So definitely game changing, game changing, game changing. Well, and just think about it. That's also word of mouth on a postcard. So like word of mouth marketing, I believe is never dead because if you have a good experience, you're going to go tell 10 people. And that's just kind of rule of thumb that you had a great experience with whether that was an amazing restaurant or service that you just experienced. Same thing goes with um, hiring someone, someone like you, right? If they had a, an amazing experience and I saw down the street that you just sold my neighbor's home and I saw that testimonial about my neighbor saying that you were amazing, I'm going to go walk down to my neighbor's house and be like, can you please tell me more about Greg? Because I just saw that you had an amazing experience with them. I'm curious because we might be selling soon and I might reach out to Greg. So anyway. Love it. Hey, there was a, a question in the chat that I missed. Sorry, Chuck, about the color palette. Is there a disc like assessment that shows a color to go with our personality or brand? Uh, mm. That I don't know. However, if you look at a color chart, there's many color charts out there. The one I showed you isn't as detailed, but there is one, there are, there are ones out there that are super detailed. And so you'll just have to see what color, um, you know, associates with you. So like, <clears throat> for example, uh, when, when Tristan and I were coming up with the lab coat agents logo, it's red and orange and red is passion, love, energy, power, strength, orange is friendliness, success, confidence, courage, happiness, joy. So, you know, that's part of the reason we chose it because we want people to feel those emotions together. But yeah, definitely just Google color palettes and color meanings and you'll come up with tons of, tons of diagrams, more, more um, detailed than the one I shared with you. So, um, and I also just dropped in the chat, uh, the, the link to the video defining your target audience. So here I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to drop these three in the chat and, um, cause these three will help you. These three replays will help you with this call that we're talking about. Um, hold on one second. Uh, the 10 steps to a memorable brand, 10 steps to a great logo and defining the target audience. So those three videos that I just dro dropped in the chat will help you when you try to implement this. So we're all, we're coming back full circle. Yeah. You no, know, there's a, there's a method to this crazy. Method. There's a rhyme to a reason, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, and so don't anyway, forget about yeah. hashtag brand your world, right? So take yeah. a screenshot, put that on the social. Um, we are doing a contest to see. Who is doing it out there the most? And you might just want to surprise. Yeah. Hashtag brand your world. Take a picture of the of the Zoom that you're on right now. Take a screenshot, post it on social medias. Hashtag brand your world. Tell people about Realify and then they should be on these calls. So anyway, the practice of farming in neighborhood stands as a cornerstone for real estate agents. If you're trying to carve out a niche in a specific location, create a lasting impact, it's not just about transactions. It should be about 
cultivating relationships, fostering trust. And by the way, farming isn't just cards, postcards. It's events. Yeah. You know, right. it's events. It's it's pop buys. Uh, like, you know, <clears throat> what we did was, you know, Halloween pop buys. We would go and hang little Halloween um, bags with candy. Or, you know, when we were introducing ourselves to a new farm, we went around with bags of popcorn that said popping by to introduce ourselves. So, you know, you can do a few things like that. So not just the cards, but actual physical things. Yeah. Um, you want to always be delivering value, knowledge, personalized service. Um, you can definitely solidify your reputation as a local authority and uh, ensure that you're going to stay top of mind when people are considering um, their real estate choices. So um, definitely by embracing this focused approach, you're not just selling properties, you're building communities, you're enriching neighborhoods, yes. and you're contributing to the overall well-being and growth of the areas that you serve. So mailing shouldn't just be transactional. It shouldn't just be how many cards am I sending out. It can be a mix of cards, little pop buys, yeah. um, little, some events, you know, uh, things like that. I have that a fun example I want to yeah. share, Nick. I know somebody in my world that does um, pop buys for her past clients. And it's typically around springtime that she drops off like um, a six pack of pansies to her past clients and a little tag that says referrals help me grow. A, a, a six pack of what? Like flowers. Oh, flowers. Pansies or whatever the type of flower is. And they, she drops it off on her past client's porch and says referrals help me grow. And then like a little tagline after that. And she gets so much business out of it. Yeah, there's so many little fun things like popping by with a bag of popcorn. I love um, that. Yeah. Bag of popcorn. You know, there's so many things that are fun and corny, but people will remember. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be expensive, you know, mm -mm. It, it can be inexpensive and fun and it is fun. So believe me, it's fun. Um, any, any final thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Oh, I almost forgot. Shoot. Hold on a second. I have to get a link for you guys. Um, every month there's a new link um, because I, I didn't want to do a Zoom for like, you know, entire year. That's in crazy town. Um, but next week, the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th, you're going to still, you're still going to use um, this link. But starting Monday, October 2nd, you're going to be using this link so just keep this this is the realify oops i'm spelling it wrong this is the realify link for october okay so starting october 2nd you're going to want to use that link but going until then you're still going to use the same link so if you still want to be on the calls that's the link you use for october cool Thanks, everyone. It's a work. We'll see you next time.